from in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday. It's time for another edition of Like is 101. Well, it's Like is 101. Welcome to the class. Spend less dough and get more ass. If baby wants steak, baby got to wait. Because I ain't spending more than $40 on a date. Yeah. Buy ya. Look at don't buy ya. B, if she answers the cell phone, disappear. Yeah. Want to get laid? Gotta be an auto oh. spike, use prophylactics with Tabasco, hit it, quit it, no time to spoon. These are the rules of Professor Poo. Got it knocked out, but you look in the switch. Pull a Hail Mary and dump that bitch. Like, kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. Like, kiss 101. Like, kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. Like, kiss 101. It's Like Is 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I'm your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Like Is 101. Now, for some of you uh, who, of course, have joined the class recently, you may need a little refresher course, and we're proud to give that to you. Remember, this is a class about learning how to get laid. We're not here to help you get married. We're not here to help you meet the love of your life, your soulmate. Do I look like Dr. Neil Clark Warren? Do you think I believe in 29 levels of compatibility? I do not. I couldn't care less whether somebody is compatible. The only place I care about them being compatible is in their bed, between their 150 thread count sheets where I get knee burns. That's the only thing I care about. If you're in this classroom, you are here to learn how to get laid. If you are not looking to get laid on a date, you're in the wrong place. If you're looking to get married, go to another class. If you're looking to walk hand in hand into the sunset with your soulmate, you're in the wrong room. You need to go to another classroom or just go down to the uh, bursar's office and get your tuition refunded. Understand? Like is 101 is the course that teaches men how to get laid. Dating equals porking. The one and only goal, men, that you have when you go on a date is to get laid. Some of you pussy boys out there uh, have been raised by single mothers, and uh, they have uh, taught you to be respectful and to worry about what women are feeling and to cry and show your feelings. F that. My feelings are none of your goddamn business. I'm going to unzip my fly. I want you to start feeling. You know what I'm talking about? That's what I'm looking for. If your dad was there, he'd have kicked your ass and told you the same thing. But because because your mom couldn't stand to be with the jerk who impregnated her, you ended up having to grow up uh, where you had to sit down and pee sitting down. That's what you had to do. Jesus. If you have a date planned for this weekend and your ultimate goal is not to have sex with that girl... Call her immediately and cancel. You've made a big mistake. That's the purpose of it. You know, when you go out and have a drink and you go out and have dinner, this is all just a ruse. It's a premise. Women don't want to believe that all you want is to get laid, or at least they want you to think that all they want is, uh, they, they don't want you to think all they want is to get laid. And that might be all they want, but they're not going to tell you that. So you have to go through this ritual. 
of pretending to give a crap about what they're saying, what they do, who they are, and you don't care about any of that stuff. You want to keep everything as short and sweet as possible. You don't want to be talking to her. You don't want to be telling her your politics. You don't want to be telling her what your religion is. You don't want to be telling her that your mom has glaucoma and your dad had a heart attack. You don't want to be talking about any of that. You just want to get laid. You're not out there to go to Starbucks and drink a Frappuccino or a chai. You're not there for that. You're there to get laid, boys. That is what you're there for, period. Right? That and only that. And we use a premise like, let's have a drink, uh, let's get together, let's watch a movie. This is all a premise to get laid. Let's not forget that. We don't care about watching the damn movie. We don't care if the food is any good. We don't care about uh, spending uh, $200 on a bottle of wine to impress anybody, buying flowers, renting limousines. I know guys who do this stuff. And they're no more likely to get laid than the average loser who shows up with a daisy in his hand. Okay? No matter how much you spend. She decides before you come over whether you're getting any. She's already decided. No amount of lobster or champagne or limousine is going to change your mind. In fact, you show up with a limousine, you intimidate women. You know why? Because then they know <laughs> that this is not just an evening where they're going to uh, be wined and dined. And whether you intend it or not, they think you're expecting them to put out the back of that limousine. By the way, I frequently have a limousine. Because it's part of my gig, you know, I, I have limos take me places I, when I make appearances. You know, I'm usually having a few drinks. The limo is uh, taking me around. So I haven't spent anything. But if a chick gets in a limousine with me, it's because she's going to take her clothes off. There's no other reason for a woman to be in the limousine with me. I have the women ask me this question all the time. As your professor, when I show up in a limousine, women want to get in the limo. I don't let them. The only way I let them in is if they're going to put out I remember a few years ago, we were in uh, Albany, New York, and we were doing uh, our show, and after the show, we were out and about in town uh, with our limousine, and we had a few drinks at one particular place, we came back out, and there were four girls wanting to see the inside of the limousine. They were standing there, like, trying to peek in the window, and then when we showed up, they can we get in with you? Can we take a ride with you? Yes, ladies, as long as you're willing to show us what you got. If you'll flash us or give us something, you can get in. But why, why do we want to take you for a lift? We're trying to meet somebody who's going to put out. All you're going to do is, is block it. We don't want you blocking anything. You're either going to give us what we came for or stay out of the limo. Or we're going to go find it on our own. It was this girl's 18th birthday. and There were her friends. They were all 18. At least that's what they told us. We believed it. And so uh, these girls wanted to ride the limo so badly, they showed us what they had. <laughs> Karen and I were getting a big laugh out of it because this is the, the very basis of gold digging. These girls were willing to do whatever we told them to do in order to get inside the limousine. They were. And we were happy to get what we got. Beautiful 18-year-old breasts. Oh, my goodness. They were spectacular. Wow. Very, very nice. So uh, what I'm trying to tell you, boys, is uh, you should not be spending any money on chicks if you can avoid it. You should be spending as little as possible and wasting as little time with chicks as possible. Many of you have the, you, know, you want to spend the entire Saturday with them or you want to have dinner and sit there through three hours of various courses coming out. Blah, 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 blue, 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 Shut up, shut up, shut up. You don't want to have to listen to her talking like that, and you certainly don't want to have the spotlight on you, because anything you say can and will be used against you when it comes to getting laid. You might have the wrong politics. You might not like cats. You might be a member of the wrong political party. You might be, uh, if you're like me, you're probably pro-choice. <laughs> you might say the wrong thing.
maybe of the wrong religion. I'm an atheist. Do I want to be sitting on a date saying, oh, yeah, and I don't believe in God? Just some chick who believes in God but might be willing to give me sex anyway? You know, women who believe in God like to get on their knees. I'll tell you right now, they know how to do it. Probably already have knee pads. I'm not going to tell them that. I'm not going to introduce any of that information. I'm a political independent. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in marriage. I don't want to have children. I I like having sex, and then I might not call you for weeks at a time. <laughs> what am I going to do? Like, tell all this stuff? You, the longer you sit there and blab, the more likely it is she's going to find some reason not to have sex with you. You want everything to be short and sweet, simple, easy. That is what you want. No more, no less. I don't know how much easier I can make this for you. Many of you guys overspend, waste time, over plan. You don't want the you don't want the light of day to hit her face. You do not want to see her during the, the day. There's no coffee, there's no lunch, there's no walking hand in hand to the park. Forget that stuff. Leave that to the romantics out there, okay? You want to get laid. You want to get laid. That is your priority, man. Don't forget it. This lecture is a very important one. I'm trying to focus you. You want to get laid. My job as your professor is to help keep you out of commitment, keep you out of relationships, keep you out of marriage, keep you out of having children. I don't want you to waste any time, money, or energy blabbing with chicks who are never going to give you what you want. It's that simple. Now, you may agree with your professor. You may have questions on how to accomplish these goals, and I am here to help you at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Because your professor doesn't believe in dating single mothers and because your professor believes in getting laid without any commitment, there are some women out there in the classroom who get upset. They get angry with your professor. You are welcome to call in and add to the classroom discussion as well at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. All right, everybody. Uh, class is in session. Now we need to hear from you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. All you young guys out there, you want? You have any questions about women, listen to Tom. He knows what he's talking about. Tom's a man. It's Likas 101 on the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's Likas 101. I am your professor at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Remember, it's Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello? Is that a question or a statement, Michael? Oh, I'm sorry. Tom, I was just wondering what your opinion on romantic people were and... Uh, the people that like to be romantic? Well, first of all, they're not students in this class. Yes, sir. I was just wondering what your opinion on them was. Uh, they uh, don't care about getting laid. They were probably made, raised by single moms in many cases. So they were raised to, quote, unquote, respect women rather than to try to get in their pants. And uh, I'm certainly not one of those. Yes, sir. And I was wondering... Um, I can't recall. Were you previously married? Oh, come on. You you know the answer to that. You've been listening. Uh, yeah. Um, like, what what happened with those marriages? Like, what, what got Well, see, well, to... first of all, why did you try to be cute? Why did you, like, like pretend you didn't know I, I've been I, married? I'm not sure if you said you were married, like, uh, four times. But, see, you do know the answer to this, so I'm asking why you're doing this. Do you think it's cute? No. Or coy? no why are you doing it? I'm just curious about it. No, no, but, but, but the point is, you lied and pretended you didn't know I've been married before, right? I just wanted to re, like, just make sure. 
No, no. You knew the answer. You already knew how many times I've been married. You knew it. All right, correct. So Sorry. you were lying. Because you thought it was cute, is that why? Why'd you do it? Uh, I just, I, I'm sorry, I just wanted to make sure. You already knew the answer, you moron, and I, you know what? I don't appreciate that. Sorry. Don't care about getting laid. There we go. That's the whole purpose. It was to hear his own voice on the radio. 1-800-5800-TOM. I am your professor. This is Lycus 101. It's Gladys. Hello. Hey, Tom. Yes, um, I was kind of going to ask you the same question that Michael just asked you. Uh, what do you think about semantics? But I, I heard your answer. I heard your 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 answer to that question. Um, oh, how would you feel to come home and have a a, a beautiful, uh, not very young, because I understand you like eighteen year old and the eighteen year old breasts and how they feel and everything. Uh, by the way, every man likes that. Well, how about if the 35-year-old person is in your house, it's, it's good-looking, and it has a, a, a hot meal, you know, waiting for you, and um, and it just the fact that you're going to have, a, a you know, someone waiting for you in, in a beautiful house, clean house. And but I have, a clean, I, have a, I have a clean house right now. Well, yeah, but it's not the same. It's not the same. I, I think that a certain point... Trust me, it's not... Yo, I agree, it's not the same. It's not the same. It's better. No, it's not better. You could say that as much as you want, but at a certain point in your life, you know you feel lonely. You yeah, know well, at what point is that going to come? I That hasn't happened yet. Oh, God. You know the people you're taking with you are going with you for one thing, and you're saying... You're I don't really care. Does it really matter if if it was looks? Would that be any better than money or being famous? But, what, it, people are with you for whatever attributes you have. And by the way, the money I have is a representation of who I am. It's an accomplishment. I'm proud of it. And if somebody wants to be near me because I am an accomplished individual, that's fine. Oh, um, gosh. <laughs> I, I always wanted to talk to you because I hear um, I hear you and I always said, oh my god, I want to call this guy and tell him this, 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 and that. No, I forgot everything I wanted to tell you, but I always think the opposite, though. Money is not everything. I think it's, it's who you are. Darling, that's what, what you know what? You know what? That's, you. that's what people, that's what people without money always say. Money isn't no. everything. Because money is not, is, it doesn't buy the feelings, the warmth, the true feelings. I've got plenty of feelings and warmth from people, but I don't have to have them living at my house. Well, no, not necessarily living at your house, but how about a true relationship? Why do I need that? You, you don't know what is a true relationship. Uh, dear, I've been married four times. Oh, yeah, you've been married to the wrong people. Uh, dear, but the point is, I don't even know what it's like to be married. But, but you have not, you, how do you know you, the way the right people were? In one case, I was married for almost 10 years. Oh, God. You probably, you were probably always uh, picking the wrong bimbos, that's why. Dear, have you ever, have dear, you ever been dear, dear I, I haven't, I don't marry, dear, when I've gotten married, I didn't marry bimbos, okay? I, <laughs> I, I have sex with bimbos, and then I drop them like, like I use Kleenex when I'm done with them. I didn't, I didn't marry bimbos, why would you assume that? Well, because if uh, well, something went wrong. But, darling, you, know? you, you, you should notice something else, too. When I talk about having been married, do I really say a lot of negative things about the individuals I was married to? Generally, I don't. No, 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 you don't. But because I don't, I'm not angry at any of them. I don't hate them. I, I don't have any uh, acts to grind with them at all. We, 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 we're on good terms. In fact, uh, most of them still talk to me, and I still talk to them. Well, that's good. That's that's something good about it. So, you. But, 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 that, but the point I'm trying to make to you, dear, is that they were not bimbos. If they were bimbos, I wouldn't be talking to them now. Tom, and are they talking to you because of you, or are they talking to you because of your... I don't really care because, you know what? Everybody talks to you because of you. Everybody talks to you because of who you are and what you are, okay? If you are beautiful, are you attractive? Are you attractive? I, I am, yes, I am. So, so the guys who talk to you only talk to you because of one thing, because you're hot. No, oh, no, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you don't. Well, they probably start off, you they, know, talking They want to get laid. They talk and to you because they, they want to get laid and because you're hot. No, once they know me, though, they're not going to touch one hair of my head and, 
and they they try to get they, know they still think they have a chance, and that's why they're still talking to you. Uh, well, they don't have a chance, you know. I have been. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether they do. They think it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether they have a chance. They think they have a chance. Well, they can think all they want. That's not my point. Know? The fact is, the guys who talk to you talk to you for only one reason: because they think wrongly that they're going to get laid. Oh my goodness! That's they. How does it feel to know the guys only talk to you because they only want one thing? Well, well, after listening to your show, I, I, I now I see it that way, and it makes me angry now. That's how. That's how it is. I know, and it makes me angry because I've never really thought about that. I, 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 I always thought, you know, guys were were nice enough to care for for me and and for who I am, and and you know who no, I am. No, why? Why would we care about that? Why would we care about that? Because they're right. I mean, think about this right In fact, I'm going to tell you something else right now. I'm only talking to you because somebody's paying me to talk to you. If, if they were not paying me to talk to you, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I know, and he always said that, too, and that makes me angry. But it's true. I know. I mean, if I'm not going to get into your pants and uh, and somebody's not paying me, what's the point of having a conversation with you? Well, just getting to know someone else. Why do I, why do I need to get to know you? Well, I might have something interesting, you know? No, you no, know. no. I'm from a different country. Uh, you might want to know about my country. You might well, want to know. I'd like to know about you your know. country if you take your top off and I can get a look at the uh, terrain. Okay. You're not going to see my terrain. I can take you to my country and you can see all the terrain you want. No, all no, the no, no. That you want. But you're not seeing mine? Why not? Because I don't think you make men enough money to see that. Really? You you have no idea how much money I make, dear. You'd be surprised. I, I, I don't know. If you knew like if that. you knew how much money I make, you'd show me anything I want to see. Okay, well show me the money. I'll show it to you. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Show but once I show money. once I show it to you, I'll show you all my bank statements. Okay. But then once I do, I want to see what you've got. No, you show me the money in my bank account and then I'll uh, you, oh, I show so you in other words you are I see you're a whore. I understand. I'm now I know what you are. A you're so a you, hooker. You think to say, it's like I see. You're a hooker. Talk. You're a prostitute. I'm, I don't think that way. You're a whore. So I, if I put money in your bank account, you'll show me what you've got. So you're a whore. I have had sex with two people in my life. Thank you very much. And I'm happy with that. And I'm happy with the money. And I'm happy with that. And, and, you know, and money has no value. Well, then why would I want to waste my time talking to you for God's sake? Because I want to. I don't, I don't believe you. Now you can't even pay to talk to you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. This is Eric on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much. Hey, um, well, I was listening earlier and you were saying that it's stupid to get married and not have sex and stuff, but I was saying. Well, it's because you don't understand the other person's like point of view on life, you know? I don't care about the other person's point of view on life. I have needs. They need to be met. Oh, that's you, but not like, I don't know why. Well, I'm not in the relationship for the benefit of the other person. I'm in it for what I need. Oh, well, yeah, they're your needs, but like, I don't know why you got to say things about other people. Like when what? Your needs is just to have love and like have someone day in, day out with them. Throughout the rest well, of the and by, by the way, they still need sex. They just sit there and tolerate it quietly. Well, you know, necessarily, they don't always just live life without having sex, unless they're, like, really religious or something, but they have sex once in a while. Well, once in a while is not enough for me or most people. I yeah, mean, neither. I ain't going to lie. I'm just, like, supporting other people and stuff, but, like, because, I don't know, it's just it's fine. Like, what I, are you talking about? What do you mean what I'm talking about? What are you talking about? I'm saying that the other people get offended by this kind of stuff. I That's really like, don't care if they get offended. Anyone who's offended, turn off the radio now. All right. Yeah, that's true. Never mind. That's true. But but yeah. you know what? People, including you, you can't resist. You have to listen. It's true. It's like a... People like are a offended. You think I care if people are offended? I couldn't care less. Yeah, me neither. 
another one. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's like it's one oh one. I am your professor. This is Mark. Hello. Hey, Tom. I love you, man. How's it going? Going great. Hey, I just wanted to ask you. You know how you said before how you know if you you know your date talks on a cell phone, she answers her phone like like at the dinner table or whatever it is that you're doing. You know, you excuse yourself, you walk out. What do you do if, let's say, you go pick her up? I mean, you're 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes into the date in the car, and she answers her cell phone while you're driving. I mean, Oh, I have a way of dealing with that. I have a way of dealing with that. You know what I do? What's that? I drop them off in front of the restaurant, and I say, I'm going to look for a parking space. I'll be right back. Okay. And then I leave. All right. So then that's it. You just drop her off. Because the reason why I ask that is because I'm kind of like you. I I really like foreign ladies, you know, especially Latin American women. And a couple times that I've gone out... They'll answer their cell phone, right, and not only in the middle of the date, but like in the car, like, you know, their uncle or sister or some crap is calling and they don't get it, you know, that they're on a date, you know, it's kind of like you're paying well, for Well, you, uh, you also have the right to tell them right at the beginning that, you know, I consider it rude. Uh, I won't talk on my phone. In fact, I'm going to shut my phone off while I'm with you so you have my full attention. And I expect the same. Okay, so, I mean, like, what, like five minutes into the day you say, you know, I'm really interested in getting to know you. I'm going to turn my cell phone off because I'm interested in you and blah, blah, blah. No, no, you're not going to say you're interested in them. <laughs> you never say that. No, you tell, she gets in the car. Here's how you do it. If you're afraid she's going to be one of those, you show her your cell phone, you turn it off. You know what? Um, I want to give you my full attention tonight, so I'm going to shut off my cell phone. And I'm asking you to do it, too, because I, I want your full attention. Okay. Now, now, Tom, what would you say, like I said before, you know, you've had experience in dating a Latin, Amer Latin American chick? Yes. Out of all the foreign chicks that I've chased in my dating life, I guess you could say, Latin American chicks seem to be a little bit, I don't know, for the likest one-on-one, like, kind of philosophy, it's been a little bit tougher for me as compared to other, like, races and ethnicities. It's, that it's tough you because say? you have to actually pretend to give a rat's ass. Okay, so that's the main thing. Well, yes. I mean, uh, you have to understand. Uh, with, with Latin women, uh, more than other women, although I'd say all women have this to some extent, Latin women especially don't want you thinking that they sleep with everybody. So they want you to believe that, you know, they've only slept with a couple of guys, and they were boyfriends, and that's it. Now, so, your whole, so the whole attitude is to have, like, well, I really don't care if you're banging anybody. No, no you're not going to get into that kind of conversation on a first date. But the point is that she is going to say things uh, that, and that will give you the idea that they're hard to get into bed. Okay? Okay. All right? And there are people who are hard to get into bed, but for the most part, uh, this is just a ruse, Okay. Because uh, most Latin women I have known will generally say right off the bat, I don't want you to think I'm a slut. So then what, what, I'm, what I'm having a hard time Even with, when they are a slut. So they could be a slut. So what, what, how would you go about projecting? Even if they're a slut, they're never going to let you know that. So basically then what it, all boils, it boils all back down to on the third date, they're either going to put up or you're going on to the next one. Correct. All right. All right, Tom, I appreciate everything you do, man. I know you're doing this for your career, but you're, like you said before, man, you really are doing a public service. We all love you. As you know, I'm doing the Lord's work. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I want to talk first about the 167 pound nine. I don't buy that for a minute. No, I don't either. I think you've got to be drugly. You gotta be drunk and ugly to get her later on in the evening. Drugly. <laughs> From a secret location in Hollywood, California. It's Likus 101 with your professor, Tom Likus. This is Jim. Hello. Jim? Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Awesome. You know, you really did save my life. Um, back when I was about 16 years old, I met a woman. She was about six years older than I was. You know, didn't think I had a chance, so I did the stupid thing. You know, was trying to be her friend. A couple years later, she got married and had a kid. 
And after about a year after the kid was born, she told me she had separated from her husband. Things didn't work out, and they were going to be getting a divorce. She started telling me how she would think about me and, and all that kind of stuff, and we started to hook up. Well, I was a complete pussy. I handed my, I handed everything right over, including my balls and my money. She spent every little dime that I had. I had, uh, you know, plenty of money in the bank. She spent over seven grand on her bills, her kid, which I ended up taking care of most of the time. Everything except for me. And she did just what most women do. She hardly ever gave it up. Which it is, was, which is what I've warned you about, and you didn't pay any attention, did you? No, I didn't. I thought I knew more than the professor. And I had actually already been listening to you about three years before this happened. So after about a year and a half or so of us being together, me raising her kid and giving her everything I had, basically, I sold my dream car, sold my motorcycle, bought a family car and all this stupid stuff, I found out that she was still with her husband the whole time. When I found out... Wait a minute. She was living with the husband or having sex with him? She was living, having sex, everything. Well, how, did she have access to your, how did she have access to your money? Well, she would ask me for it, and like an idiot, I gave it to her. How much did this experience cost you, Jim, so people can hear it? Overall, about $7,500. 7500 or $75,000? Uh, 7500 7500 In the total time you were with her? Yes, that's right. That, but that really doesn't even include the meals or, you know, whenever we needed something little from the grocery store. That well, that's why I'm asking you. I mean, is it more like 10000 or 15000 it's probably closer to 10000 Tom. Right. Well, now, is there a piece of ass in the world worth $10,000? No. There's not a piece, in, a piece of ass in the world that's worth forty. but that's why you only have your limit at forty, right? Right. My, uh, but there isn't a piece of ass worth $10,000, much less one that doesn't put out. Exactly. You know, I was, uh, you know, I was like 20 years old. Once every couple weeks was like death to me, you know? When did you realize that the professor was right and you were wrong? How long did that take? It took entirely too long. It was uh, when I found out that she was still married, still sleeping and living with her husband is when I realized that I should have been listening to you the entire time. Instead of listening to you for entertainment, I should have been looking to you as advice. This stuff I say is true, and now you had to learn it the hard way. You're another one of those guys. I say, don't put your yep. hand over that flame. It's hot. Yep. And you had to sear right down through the epidermis to the dermis. You had to go right down. The, the, the It's a third-degree burn, baby. Yes, it is, and I did it badly. But uh, that's not even the worst part. After I found out that she was with her husband still, and, and I broke up with her after I grew some balls, I did break up with her. And about two weeks later... She calls me and says she's pregnant. Uh-huh. Yeah. And obviously we didn't know whose it was. So, like an idiot, I, you know, stayed around and hung out with her and with oh. friend and continued to give her some more money while she was pregnant. Then she had the kid. Of course, you know, I wanted to have a DNA test done, and she started to argue with me that her and her husband didn't want to do it. They said they could prove it by the conception date, which is complete crap. So I told them, look, either you do it or I'll take it to and make you get a DNA test. So after about a month of arguing, we finally did. And thank God, my kid, because I did listen to you. I had always used a condom, but, you know, they're not 100%. Right. So after uh, we found out that uh, it wasn't my kid, I was done with her. Well, I get a call from a restricted number. About three months after I had, after the kid was born, I'd been done talking to her. About three months later, I get a call from a restricted number. And she's calling me and begging me for money because she can't afford, because, of course, you know, she doesn't work. Her husband is a, you know, a college dropout. Not that they all suck, but he's an idiot. Doesn't make hardly anything. He works at Costco. So she calls me up begging me for money because she doesn't have money to pay the kids or for food for the kids. So I told her, look, that's your problem. You know, they were living at her mom and dad's house rent-free. And you know what? It just occurred to me. All of a sudden I heard, you know, dad in, in my voice, or in my head. Don't pick up the phone. It's not your problem. So that's what I did is I, picked, I hung up the phone, and I haven't talked to her in the last two years, about a year, actually, a year and a half, and I couldn't be happier. You know, I'm sitting there, I'm banging every girl. I've got one, do one going out the back door, a new one coming in the front door every night. 
I couldn't be happier. And all I would have had to do was listen to you. I wish you'd listen to me all along. You'd be $10,000 happier by now. No kidding. I wouldn't have been living paycheck to paycheck for two years after her. That's you know, right. It, it, but, uh, yeah, that was about a $10,000 mistake in uh, the worst three, three and a half years of my life, my life total, actually. Amazing. So, Amazing. You did save my life, Dad. I really do appreciate it. And to uh, all those guys out there that think that uh, they know more than you, trust me, so did I, and I was beyond wrong. It was my worst decision ever was to think that you were wrong. <laughs> I agree with that. Okay, well, Dad, can you please take me out of classic style? Of course I can. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. I am your professor. You're listening to Like Is 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches his men how to get more tail for less money. And just as importantly, we teach women how men think at 1-800-5800-866. Sheila is listening to our online stream in San Francisco on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Great. Well, my question was... You know, I've been listening to you, and I totally understand how, you know, guys just want to get laid. Well, why is there this social stigma on girls that just want to get laid? They're we don't poor. mind. There's no social stigma on this program. Uh, know, we know want, program. We want, when we meet you, we want you to be a slut. <laughs> I know, but I guess I, my experience has been... Every guy I've just wanted to hook up with wants a relationship, and I'm just really frustrated. Well, with because that. you got a lot of guys your age. I see you're 22 years old. You got a lot of guys in your age group who are raised by single mothers, and therefore they are pussy whipped. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Um, so you have to look for the guys who grew up with two parents. Okay. That's that. A single mother is a sign of trouble. Okay. All right. What? Okay. So you got to look for the guys who have two parents. Are uh, the guys who are masculine, you know, guys who like sports, guys who like playing sports, guys who like big dogs, you know, and signs of masculinity. Okay. Guys who know what a loofah is, I, I would say these are guys who want a relationship. Okay. That makes sense. I mean, I just, you know, and I'm, I mean, my girlfriend, like, I can't be really open even with my girlfriends because, you know, they think kind of bad of me and I don't, you know, so it's frustrating. Now you can fly up down here. We'll hook up any time you like to. Okay. I don't even need to know your last name. <laughs> I don't want to know yours either. Uh, don't worry about it. I d just call me Dr. Shapiro. Okay. Okay. I'm a doctor. <laughs> I like doctors. I know. I'll bring, I'll bring my speculum there. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Well, Straight you know, out of the freezer. <laughs> the freezer? Yes. Like a... Speculum can never be cold enough. <laughs> no, the speculums are too cold. I've got my own stirrups at home, you know. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. What are they attached to? Well, your feet as soon as you get there. <laughs> okay. I'm going to need to get a good look at the problem. Well, there is no problem. You haven't met me yet. <laughs> okay. Dr. Shapiro. Dr. Shapiro, all right. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate the call. <laughs> my alter ego, Dr. Shapiro. You hear my name being called some of America's finest restaurants. <laughs> you hear me being paged at upscale events. I get around. Because... God damn it, my first name is Doctor. Oh, no, I'm not a doctor. That's my name, Dr. Shapiro. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Oh, my goodness gracious. Let's try a quick one here. Uh, Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, buddy? Great. Hey, I just want to let you know I am a Likas 101 graduate. Oh, man, you have saved me, my brother. Really? Yeah, I, I've had, what, three girlfriends, like, serious relationships. But this, this was all before I started listening to you. And now, uh, the last girlfriend I had, I had to dump that bitch, man. She was nagging. Uh, 
she didn't put out much. And now I am getting more ass in the toilet seat, as you very well like to say. Love that. Oh, you love it. <laughs> I just love hearing about it. There you go. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, and here's the age range. 18 to 36. I'm surprised you go up that high. I know, me too. How are you well addressed? Here's my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Another hour of Like Us 101 coming up. The Tom Like Show.